Good morning and welcome back guys. So I'm up 916, you can see it right here. And most likely I'm just gonna go ahead and walk away again because I was trading NTRB. This is the one I'm up on the most, um, but we had another really nice gapper, GWH. I didn't trade it at all. And then I started feeling like, oh man, this is actually the winner today. I should start trading it. And it wasn't, it felt a little extended and good thing I stopped because it, it pulled back and I think I would have took a loss. Um, and right now the market is still really slow overall. So I feel like today's not the day or maybe even this week is still not the week to, you know, start gunning it. If I start seeing more consistent action, more gappers over 40%, we're still kind of in that under 100% zone. So it's still not that exciting. I, I don't really feel like this is the time to take that big swing right at a high or an extended move. Um, because most likely we're going to start uh, having a drop in volume. But I got to say something I noticed kind of interesting is so Ross Cameron, I'm sure many of you traders know Ross Cameron. He's, he's like the, one of the bigger uh, day trading uh, YouTubers out there, um, specifically for the small cap gap and go challenge. And he was gone last week. And last week was probably some of the lowest volume we've seen like ever, especially for Q4, beginning Q4, that was insanely slow volume. And now he's back, he's streaming the market open, and it's been a little bit better. I wouldn't say like the market's falling Ross Cameron, but I gotta say, um, with GWH specifically, I was just watching, I just finished um, watching his, um, his, his stream that he was doing, I wanted to see what he was doing. Uh, so I went back quickly, watched it before I started doing my recap. And yeah, he was really focused on GWH. So I kind of feel like, I mean, he had 10,000 viewers, I think at once. So that's 10,000 potential day traders watching GWH um, for this move here um, up at the market open. So I, I really like the fact that he's streaming right now. I feel like he could get a lot of momentum into the market. We were streaming the market open um, for two hours. So starting at, I think it was like nine till, 11 um, for about a year and a half. And yeah, a, a lot, it gets a lot of people looking at the same thing. I don't really think um, that helps like the streamer, so to say. I really don't, um, especially because there's a delay and there's just so many variables in place. But I do think it gets a lot of people looking at one uh, stock, which I think might have been a big reason GWH had such an intense open. Um, popped open here, pulled back, um, but the next candle, I mean, this is a 12% move, pulled back again, and then in total, 35% move um, from the open low. So that's that's pretty good action for what we've been seeing, and that makes me quite excited to see you know what might be coming in the in the next few weeks or so. Um, oh, NTRB just halted to the upside. Look at this, my God, absolutely crazy. This is this is stuff we've been seeing so much lately, and it's been making me quite uncomfortable. It's just a ticker that the price action is horrible on. It's just choppy, flushes, flushes, and then randomly it has this huge spike to the open, and then afterwards it just keeps selling off. The price action is so hectic, and you really don't want to be chasing highs, and I think that's a big reason I, I didn't trade GWH uh, in this pullback, um, even though this pullback would have worked if I just took profits really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's quickly go through the tickers I traded today and uh, probably wrap it up there. I can show you guys my swing trades right at the end as well if, if you're interested. Um, I, I do have some comments about the swing trades uh, every now and then. But leave a comment below. What do you guys think about Ross Cameron streaming again? Are you stoked about it? Are you guys following uh, Ross Cameron? I'm really like anti-copy trading. I know when I was uh, streaming uh, my day trading, I was like, guys, do not follow what I'm trading. We're here to learn together and give feedback, but just do not copy trade. And I feel the same way with Ross Cameron. I actually I have a really hard time actually watching somebody else trade uh, while I'm trading. I, I, I wrote in the Discord. It's like me trying to do my homework back in school when there was a TV on. I know some people could do it really well. Me personally, not at all. It was it just did not work whatsoever. So let me know in the comments below. Do you guys do you guys copy trade? Do you guys follow Ross Cameron? How how does it work for you? I would, I would love to know. <clears throat> how you guys take advantage of Ross Cameron. And really quickly, I just pulled up uh, my channel here. So let's go to Warrior Trading. I just wanna also show what I'm talking about here so you guys know what um, I'm discussing. So he was um, live for an hour and 15 minutes, um, 4.8 thousand, oh, 4.8 thousand. For some reason, I thought 10,000. So it was 5,000 uh, views, 5,000 viewers. Um, sorry, I, I don't know where I, I went wrong with that. Streamed 88 minutes ago. He just, I think he just wrapped it up uh, somewhere in this area. I think he's up uh, 20,000 or so um yeah end of the day 20,000 or so so that kind of gives a little bit of an uh overview or an example of exactly what i was talking about here for anyone that doesn't know who ross cameron is was warrior trading one of the biggest youtube channels for day trading small cap gap and goes exactly what we do here so 
Yeah, in the comments below, let me know how do you guys take advantage of somebody streaming their live trades? Always interested to hear what you guys are doing. All right, so let's dive into the tickers I traded today, starting with T-A-R-A, T-A-R-A, and let's go here to the daily first and see what this one's up to. So descending pattern um, below the 180 day student pool moving average, um, not my favorite things, but it does have high relative volume, so that's really nice. Biotech here um, with a bunch of catalysts coming in, so that looks really nice. Um, FDA looks like clears IND application. Um, looks like a few Corona, uh, COVID uh, catalysts here as well. So, okay, it has catalysts, but um, look at this, it popped up and nothing really happened after 8.5. 8.5 was big time resistance. Uh, you could see it here on the daily and we were not able to break this area pre-market. We had a former shoulder here in this area and here's the five minute chart in the middle. Um, yeah, many multiple attempts. I try to uh, go for these breakouts as well. Um, but knowing we were in a weak market, I wasn't trading into the breakout. I was trading before the breakout and looking for a possible breakout. In the second, it didn't. we didn't have instant resolution. I was taking my profits or, you know, cutting my losses. And I think I had like um, a few, like two wins and one loss and both all of them were very small. So TARA was a total scratch. And once it was on the backside, I didn't feel like this ticker was even worth looking at anymore. Um, okay, let's go to NTRB. This is the ticker I'm up 877 on. And let's go to the charts as well. I think it just opened from the hold. So yeah, this one um, also backside pattern, but it has you know room to run. I would say till about 14, 15 or so, maybe even 13. I don't know, 13.5 to maybe 14.5 um, before big resistance comes in with that 180 day simple moving average. So I was kind of optimistic on this one. It's in the personal this is personal products here, 83 million market cap, uh, 7.5 million shares outstanding. I think it has a catalyst as well. Um, let's go here I, again. I'm, I'm not super focused on news. I'm a pure price action momentum trader. I do like to see news, um, but I, I don't like to develop a bias around the news because it starts affecting my trading. Um, anyway, this one was on a nice little front side here, uh, but again, weak market. So I didn't get super aggressive into these moves. I did try to, um, at first, you know, accumulate into these pullbacks, um, and wait for the big pop, but I oftentimes missed it and then I end up buying a breakout and then just taking profits really quickly, rebuying, taking profits really quickly and so on and so forth. Um, in this area, I missed that big breakout here, this nice 9% run, but I did scalp it a little bit more. And that's really where I made most of my profits. And then into the market open, I tried a red to green move here, um, which failed. This red to green move failed, but I did uh, was able to take away some small profits really quickly um, because I had a really nice entry. But yeah, constantly flushing to the downside. And oh man, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'm going to keep trading this one. I mean, this is, this is just so hectic. Um, if you, you know, got really lucky and somehow ended up in this hold, I mean, I would definitely walk away here. I wouldn't keep trying to milk this ticker. NTRB kind of reminds me of the ticker we traded yesterday, um, PTGX. Let me go to this one and scroll back here and we'll see similar action where this ticker was also selling off after the market open, constantly flushing, and then randomly has a huge spike here, 12% to the upside. Um, but then the rest of the day also kind of sells off. It wasn't really able to hold its highs till a little bit later. Um, we did have somewhat of a pre-power hour uh, move, but um, yeah, it just it just wasn't a very nice ticker. A lot of chop and overall not, not something super interesting for me. So it's kind of funny to see the same thing happen again with NTRB where um, opens, sells off, flushes, flushes, big, big spike to the upside with a halt, um, and then price action slop, it, it gets sloppy from there. So be really careful. We've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, just sketchy price action that doesn't really make sense and it doesn't really work to chase it and it doesn't really work to um, try to continue trading a front side after that either. So that's why I'm not really buying into these pullbacks or anything like that. Although a quick little scalp here, I mean, that's a 4% move. Technically, with decent volume like we're seeing here, um, 1 million shares per, per minute is, is pretty good. So definitely a scalp candidate for sure. And I do like the up, upside potential to about 13, five or 14. So it could be good. It's just, it's really hard to say because we've been seeing so many failed moves and that's what's kind of demotivating me right now to uh, gun it a little bit more. GWH, uh, like we talked about um, in the beginning of this video, finding a nice little bottom, um, nice little pop back up here. I don't know, are we gonna get, trade this one at all today? I I, it, I don't know, it's, it's kinda sad to miss the lead gapper today, I gotta say, but I, I don't know if I can get myself to trade this ticker. 
recent IPO and nice little pop up here, um, you know, blue skies. So we'll, we'll see what we do. Maybe there's a chance we'll see this one even tomorrow. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, there's a good chance that um, if we hold this one, um, maybe it's going to be power hour winner. So if we hold the highs, let's say around 15 or $16, this could be a good power hour winner. We'll see. And then really quickly, guys, let's just go to the IRA account. Um, we got QS popping back up here really nicely. We got SoFi holding its gains from yesterday, so that's really good to see. Um, and all these other tickers really aren't too interesting to discuss right now. Um, I'll probably focus on them in an individual uh video in the future. If you guys do want me to talk about a ticker in specific, especially on this swing trade portfolio, let me know. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. It's the easiest way to support the channel. I really do appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you're new and like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.